Hello, hello, hello everyone and everyone who has joined us um, this evening or whenever on, on playback, you are very, very welcome. If you have seen one of my little conversations before, you will know what they're all about already. If you haven't, it's just a conversation with friends that are in business. And I am absolutely delighted to have my good friend, Dr. Jonathan Bloomfield, on with me this evening to talk about the very interesting subject of the fake commute. Now, I am not going to take up any more time waffling on here. I am going to start off by letting Dr. Bloomfield introduce himself. Oh, thank you very much, Marty. Very kind. Very good to, to be in the same room as you. I, I, I like your room. It's pretty, it's pretty fancy. Um, that's, uh, that's quite your style, I, I would imagine. So, um, but yes, no, it's, it's great. You and I have known each other for a number of years now, and, and uh, we've had many good chin wags. And uh, here, here we go for another one. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to, to uh, have, having a, a good conversation with, with you. Um, so for the pe people who don't know me, um, so my name is Dr. Johnny Bloomfield, and I am the director of a business here in, in Northern Ireland called Support to Perform. And Support to Perform is a consultancy business that works with uh, mainly organizations, but, but a wide variety of people, in fact. And uh, we focus on uh, help, helping people to perform. And uh, we focus particularly on their well-being, their resilience, their productivity, and their overall performance. So um, uh, we, we, we offer a, a wide range of, of services to, to support that. I'm very into diagnostics working with with evidence and, and and data and helping people walk through practical steps of of improvement and and measure the process so everything gets data driven and and accountable and measurable and 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 so forth so um have a lot of fun doing that and uh take real pleasure and enjoyment seeing uh people thrive and and performing well and whatever it is that they do that's you in a nutshell that is how I would describe you to someone else if somebody asked me, who is this guy, Dr. Johnny Bloomfield? Who is he and what does he do? Johnny, as you say, I, we, we've known each other now quite a considerable point of time. I'm actually, I'm going to, I'm not going to move on, but I, you, you were saying about the background here. And before we came onto the call, we were having a laugh and a conversation about Zoom backgrounds and what is an appropriate Zoom background. Anybody watching this, I hope my Zoom background this evening makes you feel warm and comfortable <laughs> And as if you're in the hands of a professional, that's that's the image I'm trying to give. Unfortunately, the real background, my real life background, is a bit, you know, bland accountancy nylon trousers type of background. It puts people off. So I hope this warmth and this sense of professional atmosphere uh, <laughs> suits the conversation. That's then I've got Dr. Benfield on. My good friend Johnny, I, I wanted to, to set the right atmosphere. Um, but we have known each other, Johnny, now for quite con some considerable time you know i think i might have been a young man when i knew you and <laughs> <laughs> so 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 some water has flown on the bridge since then and in that time i know maybe maybe even before i met you, you you would have worked with a number of quite large sporting organizations mm -hmm. you want to give us a little bit of a background so, so people get a sense of a background of who you are and where you've come from okay. of who you might have worked with in the past and what you might have done with them thing so um when i was growing up as a young man i was uh, very passionate about playing sports hockey was my sport and uh, a part of my life my, my world re pretty much revolved around that sport for a good 20 years of my my uh my um teenage teenage years in my 20s and then um i therefore was very passionate about working in sport and I trained as a sports scientist and did a, did a PhD with, with the aim of working in, uh, in the Premier League one day. And along that journey, my uh, first job back in 2004 was, was to, um, I was training in England at that point and I, and I actually brought me back home to Belfast and I started working as a, a fitness advisor for the Ulster Rugby team um, back, in, back in 2004. So the likes of Tyrone Howe and David Humphreys and a very young to, um, um, T Bone, T Bone, what's uh, forget his, forget his name. Um, ter terrible me, Tommy Bo, T Bone, that's oh, it. There you go, there you go. Oh, you such, such a, I just, I just, I just let it, 
palm to their Crowley valve because you want know Johnny I'm the yes, same. Like, when, when the likes of Tommy Bo and Andrew Trimble were were in their very first year of their first contract, so a long, long, long time ago. I'm very much enjoyed that. Hello, Alexa. <laughs> Alexa, stop. Sorry, sorry, folks. She's getting interested. So, um, yes, and then I moved, I progressed from Ulster Rugby through to the Sports Institute in Northern Ireland, and, and it was really a good uh, learning ground for me. It, it exposed me to a number of, of different athletes, coaches, sports. It was like my um, development, really. So I, I, I moved from being a fitness advisor into a sports physiologist role. So very much like a bit like a, a specialist car mechanic. I was very interested in what was going on underneath the hood and fine tuning and um, taking blood samples and all sorts of measurements in a lab with with a number of different sports. And that was that also allowed me an opportunity to go and work with the Northern Ireland men's team. So I, I did some European campaigns and some World Cup qualifying campaigns. So um, that, that was fabulous to, to do. So um, that would have been the, the early years of, of the likes of Johnny Evans. So um, I, I really um, enjoyed that, that experience. And um, just prior to the Beijing Olympics in 2008, um, I was offered a development opportunity with UK sports. So I went back and forward to, to England with a number of uh, like-minded professionals um, in the English Institute of Sport and the Scottish Institute of Sport and and um, and the Welsh as well. So, and we we got together and it was really like a um, a, a training camp for the for the support team to help improve f- services and facil- and, and um, how we how we worked with coaches and athletes for the Beijing Olympics. So I did, I really embraced that opportunity and, and I, I think I, I must have impressed on one or two occasions when I was on that um, and, and I was invited to come and work with the English rugby team in Twickenham and it was uh, just, just, for, just for one week, it was a pair of hands to help out with a, uh, a, a very intense training camp in the summer, a lot of profiling was, was done with the senior players. And I saw that as a fabulous opportunity. So I rolled my sleeves up and gave it absolutely everything. Probably the hardest week of work that I've ever done. And um, I managed to impress and that led to a full-time role for me with, with them. So roughly in 2009, I, I, I moved, um, well, I, I was able to still live in Belfast, but I commuted a little bit to, to, to Twickenham. And then whenever they were in tournaments like Six Nations or summer tours or world cups then I, I just bedded myself into the uh, the luxurious penny hill park um hotel uh, in in um, surrey's greenery <laughs> so it was i, I kind of i kind of spent quite a part of quite a, quite a bit of my um life in uh, in in, in luxury working like a dog <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know luxury and and uh, complete slavery at the same time so I suppose that that kind of timeline that brings me up to about 2011, the World Cup was there, and then 2012 was actually when I when I made the decision to come back home. Uh, I had an opportunity to work in, in professional golf, which which I did for a short period, but um, it, it allowed me to kind of um, start up as a self-employed, and and um, I initially started working as a sports science consultant. So like I said, I did a bit of golf, but I also did start to work with some Premier League football teams. Uh, on, on a variety of different r- remote based projects so I, I wanted to kind of settle and live in Belfast but still kind of keep my hand in the professional professional game so it was difficult it was like finding needles and haystacks to sort of offer services from afar and and supply support to to, to teams so a couple of the the international rugby teams like the traveling teams so whenever Australia or, or New Zealand came and maybe were playing Ireland then I would have gone down and done a little bit of support work with with those types of teams and um, the likes of uh, you know a lot of a lot of Premier League teams. The, one of the hot topics that I was um, well known for was sort of fatigue and recovery, and and, and helping people help, helping athletes sleep better and recover better. So um, that that was uh, a big part of my early years in terms of self employment. And then roughly around the 2014-2015 mark, I managed to make a big pivot into corporate health and well being which I was always looking at the same time to get my toe in that door because it's there's no professional sports market here 
in in Northern Ireland. So I naturally was trying to transition my skill set from um, the professional sporting environment into some sort of corporate health and well-being. So there was quite a bit of education, quite a lot of patience needed, a bit of a bit of patience needed for the market to catch up because maybe in parts of like England and London, I, I saw a lot of corporates taking on board new new um, new, new new things from like the, the Great Britain team and they were following the um, the likes of British cycling and the that kind of theory of marginal gains and, and it was sport was bleeding quite well into industry, but it, it was a little bit slower to, to, to take up in Northern Ireland. So roughly about 14, 15, I, I managed to break through into the health service and start working on leadership programs, helping senior leaders in the health service take better care of themselves, look at things like stress, that, that keyword fatigue come up and, and how do we redress the stress recovery balance, making sure that people become sustainable, health doesn't suffer, performance can, can, can be sustainable. And, um, and and I find that thoroughly enjoyable. It was a huge new challenge to me to go from working with high profile athletes to very what I would call very important individuals and, and, and keeping them safe and well and, and happy in, in work and, and sustainable. So after the health service, I started to build up a bit of a profile, a bit of reputation around, um, around some, some good work that I was doing. And that led into more private industry. So, um, my my main one of the one of the ma- major companies that has really um, springboarded me into where I am now is is the company Graham, based in, in Hillsborough, the construction team, and they've been fantastic. They're very forward thinking and innovative around well being strategies for their for their staff. So, um, we we I managed to to impress on an introduction there, and I was allowed to do a, a, a kind of a, a mini project, but with the top 50 directors, the top 50 um, senior managers and directors in, in the company. And from there it's filtered down. And now I'm, I'm kind of working very hard in the last couple of years with all staff strategies um, with their HR team. So very much it's gone a top down approach and that's, that's worked tremendously well with, uh, with, with that company. And um, I'm actually just, just about to, roll out uh, an eight-week virtual program, um, a suite of virtual programs that um, their staff have have chosen um, to, to, to take part in. So it's it's uh, another exciting new, vet, new, new opportunity for, for them. Incredibly important in the times we're in, incredibly important in the times we're in. Just a couple of things that I picked up from, do you know, it's, it's a, as much as we've known each other, I didn't realise how much in regard to sports, sports science you were dealing with the elites of in that environment and how you were working at the very top rank um, with with top professionals, top sporting professionals yeah. and, and, and you know the, the leading organizations in, the, in that field. And that, that is quite a CV yeah you have Johnny. <laughs> so well done to you. Like it's, uh, it's certainly impressed the, the socks off me. I, Two things. I, uh, Sorry, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And just, just very quickly, and you don't need to go into too much detail, but just to give him a wee bit of a better insight, what, what was your PhD and what, what did you actually do in your PhD? <laughs> so my PhD was in, um, it's, it's known as the field of science and football. So I, I, I watched a lot of football. I, <laughs> I had four, four major studies. One was, one was um, profiling the size and shape of players across the four major, in, four major leagues around Europe. So I, I, I got um, information from every squad, um, the players' heights, weights, origin, and um, position. So I, I, I got a couple of really good research papers around um, um, showcasing what the type of player that a German club would be looking for. And they were, it was really, actually the Germans were really interesting because they were they were 50-50 split in terms of German nationals and then foreign players at this point. So back, this is back 2001, 2002. So they had a pretty much even split. And then where they were recruiting from was really interesting. It was Eastern Europe and, and Western Western Africa was, was the main source of, of where those players came from. And um, 
whereas like sort of England at that time they were a lot it was a lot more diversity they were pulling players in from the likes of Scandinavia and um, certain positions had particular profiles like they were looking for very tall centre backs and and um, in Spain they were looking for very short wingers and a lot of them were coming from South America and so on so it, it was it was really interesting sort of profiling profile of the sport then the main body of research was around looking at movement patterns on the field so um, I went into a huge amount of depth and detail around how players moved on the on, on the actual on on the actual playing field and um, from that I was able to, to, to create some unique or repeated um, common movement patterns for particular positions that then could be repeated in uh, on, a, on a training ground for physical conditioning purposes or rehabilitation if they get injured yeah brilliant so That's that was that, that was that thank you and long time uh, ago. sorry long time ago well nearly 20 years now wow <laughs> where, do, where does the time go you know it's, it's, it's just it, time, like our time the past time goes past and the second thing i i picked up from you've done a lot of work in relation to stress recovery and sleep and you basically you know recovering getting rest getting sleep um do you want i certainly could have done with some assistance with that in january and i suppose most accountants could have done mm -hmm. we had a day off and, and um, it's, it's a daft way to work but it's just the nature of the beast that you have 30 days straight 15 hour days just to get the stuff done and no matter how much you plan as an accountant and how many reminders you sent the clients this, this is one of the things you have to be able to suffer but um one of the things that and i've heard this from other accountants as well is that when that tax return deadline the self-assessment tax return deadline passes and the adrenaline leaves you a lot of accountants get sick after that they catch a cold or they get a holiday flu or whatever that may be would, would what do you do help with stuff like that can you can you help people avoid that sort of um adrenaline depletion hmm. or exhaustion think, after stress yeah i think i think we'll, we'll, we'll part of the service that i provide is trying to trying to help people understand their sources of stress and, and sort of profiling that and actually vis visually giving them data on on what is what what, what types of stress what where in your day you're having a stress peak how much what's the volume of stress and then of course what's the recovery balance like look after that so so do during the night do you actually switch over from being in a stress state to being in a restorative recovery state and um, do you wake up feeling refreshed and and, and capable of of going again and again and again now there'll be periods of our lives where where we should um expect high, higher amounts of stress but it's then not adding adding to that with maybe poor lifestyle choices like coping ways to cope from stress there could be some negative ways um to to kind of counterbalance which ultimately lead to more to um you inhibiting amount and quality of recovery so then i use usually use the term of, of, of your battery life and and um this is a great way if you're over overly stressed and without um suitable enough recharge in your battery overnight then um your your battery will soon leak and go um go quite flat after a while so that that's kind of the the, the analogy of of where what burnout is right and, and and so as you as you accumulate stress you or so as you experience stress you accumulate fatigue so the recovery is to try to um remove or, or um, re replenish against the fatigue and also to build capacity on the stress so that when you encounter the same stress or the same, same volume of stress you have more resilient or more tolerant to to deal with it to cope with it but if you're um accumulating or high volumes of stress coupled with with fatigue that's not being um rejuvenated then you're just going to leave yourself in depletion or, or a deficit with a deficit now survival that's that's where the adrenaline and the keep going kicks in kicks in kicks in the absence of recovery is the, is the is the missing piece in that that simple formula mm -hmm. and that is why when you hit a point where you know the the stress maybe dissipates the body just wants to shut down mm -hmm. and it becomes very uh, susceptible at that point to, to the likes of, of, of illness yeah. and uh, that's why a lot of people will 
like accountants in February or uh, people who go on a holiday after a busy six months work maybe mm -hmm. that's when they, they, they suddenly get sick mm -hmm. because their their bodies are are under replenished and very susceptible to illness yeah the, another group of people i know that have that are barristers barristers particularly senior barristers tend to take off the summer you know you think oh that's lovely they get three months off but when they're working they work all day and late into the evening. So they're at court during the day, high, highly stressful situations. And in the evening, yeah. they're doing all their research and stuff. And they basically don't really get a break, even, even at the weekend, certainly the ones um, I be talking to. And then when they take their break at the summertime, when the courts are effectively closed, they do also get that holiday sickness thing. So it's very yeah. interesting to, to get a, a scientific... Um, the one comment I'll have on that is the people who are serious about performance, I mean, like the top, top people in the world they all take their rest incredibly seriously mm. you've got to you got to balance it out stress stress is good for you stress stress is growth too much stress causes the the decline so it's about taking on the stress but then allowing and and, and um prioritizing recovery to balance back out again we need to do that every day and then uh, you know across a week or across a month or across a year we need to have that constant um stress recovery balance in in uh, in check so that we just we, we are sustainable it's a fascinating subject and you want know i i could almost have a conversation i would i would have enjoyed just as much a conversation with you about that about how professionals and practice can combat stress and and fatigue and all the things that we should be doing but that's not why we're here tonight Johnny. tonight's conversation was going to be on the subject and is on the subject of the fake commute. And I suppose how I got to be interested in your posts, and I've seen a couple of your posts on it, and that's why I wanted to have the conversation about it was because, as you know, because you're a member of my wee group, how I, one of the ways I deal with stress and, and the pressures of my job is, there's, well, there, there's lots of things I do, but two of the things I really enjoy doing is a good conversation with friends, you know, just sitting down as we are now and having a conversation and shooting the breeze and and uh, offloading and and all that good stuff that you get to do when you're sitting talking with friends, and also going for a walk. I love I love getting out into the fresh air, into the, the Northern Ireland countryside. We have some fantastic resources here. Absolutely, you you could have a a different walk every day of the week if you wanted in the countryside in in Northern Ireland within thirty or forty miles of, of where I live here in. Um, in uh, County Down, just outside Dan Patrick. But um, what I did was I combined those two things. So it's not a group, so I didn't set up a walking group, but I set up a, a, a private Facebook page where I could invite other business owners, you know, small business owners, to join me if they, if they wanted on my Saturday morning walks. You know, I go out most Saturday mornings. Unfortunately, COVID lockdown has kiboshed all that, but I go out most Saturday mornings. And I do about a, somewhere between a five and eight mile walk. The idea being you start, you get out for nine and you're home before lunch. My mm -hmm. favorite meal of the day. So I, I like to be home before lunch. Because it means you have the rest of your Saturday. And what I did was I invited um, a number of my friends to join me. And that was, while we were able to get out, an absolutely fantastic way um, to relax and to enjoy people's company and to talk about business and family life and personal life and issues and successes and everything else. And I have to say, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really enjoying it. And anybody who's watching this who knows me and who lives close enough to, to me here in, uh, in, in the Downpatrick Balnines region that would like to come join me, or send me a wee message and certainly I'll invite you into the group. But as part of that, when you came, when you were sharing the idea and discussing your idea of fake commute, I thought it would be a brilliant opportunity to have a conversation with you. So I suppose the first question in relation, the first of five questions would be, how did you come across the idea mm -hmm. of fake commute or hashtag fake commute, if anybody wants to go and check that out? Um, yeah, well, as uh, as I mentioned earlier, I've, I've been working from home since January 1st, 2012, and um, I'm quite, quite used to um, not getting in the car and driving to an office uh, to go to work. And um, I, I guess over over the years, I've, I've learned what, what works, what doesn't work and what, what works well and what doesn't work very well. And um, I think whenever you simply roll out of bed and, and, and you know, you get your breakfast and then you just roll into, into the next room, into the office, then um, there is that blend. I think the, uh, the phrase of 
you're living at work as opposed to working from home. I think it right, applies to probably a lot of people listening to this uh, this, this recording because um, you know the, the the lines are very blurred and um, there is huge value in you know in, in, in that commute in that time that the, the twice we spent that people spend traveling to their workplace. Um, I know whenever I was living in a hotel with my work, you know, rolling from, from the hotel to, to, the, to the breakfast room where I would have began work and, and back and forth, there was literally just, I was living, living at work whenever I was back in, in that um, sport, sports environment, we're in hotel room, we're almost locked down because it's like, it's, it's a, it is a bubble that you, that you, that you live in. And, um, and then having done it at home for a number of years, I know um, that if if you kind of separate your working day and, and your your fa- your home day, that it can make a big difference to you. So I think there's just some some key psychological markers that go in your day, and one of them is just opening up your front door and taking two taking two steps outside it um, mm-hmm. to go to work. Is that is that that uh, important action that that you do? So. That is uh, fundamental to to the fake commute. Is actually let's step outside. So and how you came across it? You, you came up with it yourself because I know you had said in previous conversations that it already existed, but you'd sort of you know, independently come up with it and then yeah, that's, that's my point. I I kind of I, I kind of thought of it and was doing it and then found out that that someone gave it a term called fake commute. I don't know where that came from, but. Um, I, you know, I, I'm running with that because I think it's a good uh, way to ex- express it, particularly now where where we are doing something quite deliberately. We're not going anywhere, not going from A to B. We're going from A back to A again, mm-hmm. and you're 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 walking around your front door, but you're arriving at work, which is so also happens to be your front door. <laughs> and and I think there's huge value in just kind of having that time outside. It's very good for your natural body rhythm. So you know your your brain starts to wake up. You know, you, you know the, the benefits, physical benefits of walking. You start to get blood flow and your brain starts thinking and, and it's very good for, for creativity and productivity. You're touching on the next question I'm going to ask, sir, because mm-hmm. you're right about the, the term hashtag fake commute, you know, or fake commute, just write the hashtag. It's it's a shorthand way of describing something that people almost understand right away. You know, they, yeah. they, get a, they may not understand every element of it and, and the benefits of it, but they get the sense of, yeah, it's it's the sort of stuff that happens during a commute when I don't actually have to commute, you know. But uh, where, where, what benefits am I losing out on, or what benefits going to drive? Yeah. So you were then going to touch on the next thing and the next question, the second question of five. Um, how do you do the fake commute? So if you're interested in this concept, I presume that you're doing it. Yeah, well, well, I mean, I'll, I'll be I'll be truthful to you. I I have two very young children, so sometimes. It's it's difficult for, for me to, to, to do that because I sometimes it gets it runs past nine o'clock before I've finished off my my homely duties and I can begin to, to work. So um some sometimes I can feel like I'm 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 starting on the back foot and and um instead of maybe going out round the block, I've also got an indoor bike. So I sometimes I will get into my uh, office space. I've got an office down at the bottom of my garden now. And um, I just jump on the indoor bike and do five minutes just of maybe fast pedaling to kind of just get get going, feel alive, and and feel like I, I can begin. So that can be a very short short way to do it. And then um, same idea on the way on the way back. Um, what I'll what I'll probably do, uh, what what I'll what I would do is either get on my bike again to finish, or else now that the nights are starting to extend, I'll. Um, I'll, I'll take my children and I'll put them in the buggy and I'll take them for a, a, a walk. So they'll they'll join me on my fake commute at right. five o'clock when I finish my my day. And uh, now that the the days are starting to extend a bit, right. um, so yeah, I think it's nice to not only um, sort of have that time to myself, but it's also the opportunity to have it with my children. But I think the the kind of the significant moment coming on the second on the fake commute back on the, on the second fake commute. Is that idea of when once you arrive back, you know, it's that hang the coat up on the peg that you used to always do when you came in from work, mm-hmm. and that that again is another little psychological marker in your day where you you know it signifies work's finished. You're you're now at home, and um, if we're not commuting, if we're not leaving our our houses at all, then 
we kind of when when does the day end when does the working day actually end does it just blur and blend into your the start of your home day and yeah good point do you know what I've, i think also if you think of the time loss so so the average commute is i think no now it's 59 minutes i think and and of course belfast is uh so belfast is the most congested city in the uk i've read but the um the fact that we had 59 minutes twice on average uh, for, for, for lots of people. And you kind of think that, you know, if you're coming down from like Balamina or Bangor coming into Belfast, I could e easily take you that time. Or uh, coming up from from, from County Down, from Dunny, from Down, um, Down Patrick, maybe. <laughs> you, you'd ex you'd experience that. And we sit in traffic. And, and one of the kind of the early benefits of, of the first lockdown was the fact that we're not stuck in traffic anymore. And temporarily, we kind of feel we've got some time back and now we can use that time for other things. But I think as time has gone, by we have to recognize that that time was also valuable there was thinking space it was it was time to kind of gather your thoughts either going into work or or kind of download the day and, and kind of transition at the end at the end on the way home and time just to sit and listen to the radio and pick things things up like that but it's all you know there's value in all of that that we have to rem remind ourselves that um yeah. you know it's it's still worth doing Absolutely. I, I got a little bit distracted. Apologies, Johnny, um, when I was listening to your previous point there about the office at the bottom of the garden. Is it more yeah. like a shed gar like office or is it more like a garden office office? How long I, I, is this office? You know, so so, um, so I, again, working from home, I would have had an office which would have been a converted bedroom. But then when we had our second child, I had to take the uh, to, convert that back in, into being a bedroom, a, a, a bedroom. Um, and, I, and I was getting the boot out, out to the uh, to the garden yeah. so originally started started to look at, at, at the shed the, the glorified sheds that that exist and uh, and then I stumbled across the term garden room yeah very fancy and they they're, they're much more like studio so I'm actually in a really nicely insulated well lit double glazed and lots of nice panels and and so on um, to, to here. So I've got uh, a little man cave, a kind of nice looking man cave with uh, half of half the space is, is where I work and the other half is where I will do exercise. So it's- Brilliant, um, so you have enough space in that for both because you'd be surprised, and no, no you, you wouldn't be surprised. Um, a lot of our clients now that have had us, because we work primarily with professional people in independent practice or over the years, our clients grow and they take on staff. So some of them may well have had staff, but uh, in the office with them, but all those staff in professional services businesses, a lot of them are working from home now. Yes. And there are now actually in the last few months, we have had four or five people have been asking and inquiring about the tax uh, mm -hmm. benefits of um, actually and, and the risks because there are not risks, but there's liabilities in relation to um, operating a business from your garden and, and having a shed that's designated as, as a business expense. There's a lot around that, but quite a few people are going down that route now. And it's, mm. it's, it's a nice thing to be able to have, you know, yes, you're walking close to home, but it's separate from your home. You know, it's, you're going out the door, you're going into somewhere else and you're close and the kids aren't there and the TV isn't blurring and you, yep. you know, there's all that good stuff. So yeah, you, you find it's working for you. It's been it's been fantastic. So uh, re, you know, remarkable timing. This uh, we, we we had this uh, built in February last year. So just prior to the first lockdown, I um we you know we we'd done the work, mm -hmm. and um yeah, it's fantastic. I can I feel like I can close up. I can lock the door. That's you know work work belongs in in the in the office, and then I I go into the house and 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 play another role in there now. So yeah, there, there's there's a, there's a, there is a physical separation that I understand that a lot of people don't don't have. Yeah, and I think this plays into the idea of the fake commute as well. It's, it is that sense of how are you separating one from the other? Because Michelle and I have an office in Belfast. We don't need to have an office in Belfast. For many years, when we started the practice, we started from our offices here at home. But since lockdown, we're only in the Belfast office maybe once a week, and it's to check mail and telephone calls and and maybe if we're collecting books from illicit meetups and <laughs> car parks in, in Belfast and stuff, but we don't we don't need to have it. But there's something about that separation between yeah. home life and work life and the commute in between, you know. The, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's, I suppose that's what we're you, getting on here. You transition your mindset really from sort of doing the dishes and taking the bins out to... Right. What, what what client services do I who do I need to speak to today, and what what do I what work do I have to deliver? Yeah.
Yeah. <laughs> um, in relation to the fake, so the third question of five, um, in relation to the fake community, are there any tools, resources, apps, podcasts, services that you would recommend that can help people who want mm -hmm. to pick up this idea or benefit from fake community? Uh, yeah, where do you start? I mean, um, you, you can do anything you like on your fake commute. Um, I really, I think I, I think the best hardware, apart from your smartphone, the best hardware to, to own on a fake commute, as long as it's safe, is your, your Bluetooth headphones. Um, plug them in and off you go, and put your phone in your pocket and then you know, try and you can make, make some calls because you used to, you maybe phoned a couple of people in the car on the way, the way into the office. So it's the same, same principle applies now. You're now you're out and walking. Um, you can make one or two phone calls in that in that short ten minute commute um, and, and actually get your day off to a good schedule. So apart from that is is if you want a, a fake commute to be your part of routine, if uh, you're building into your diary, so the first thirty minutes of your day is actually phone calls, catch up. So um, I think a lot of us will will default our meetings now to to Zooms or Teams or something like puts us in, in the room face to face, but um, always sort of inquire um, if, if you're having a one-to-one -one particularly, you know, do we need to meet on Zoom or you know, this, do we have to have a video call or can we do this by walking and, and, and talking? And um, always always check that um, as well. And if, even if the weather's bad, you can always get out and put, you know, put your umbrella up, but your, your, your Bluetooth headphones, I think is a perfect piece of hardware. And then, um, you know, those kind of accountability stuff for physical activity, you've got various apps like Map My Walk, Strava, even you've got the wearables like Fitbit, Garmin, Polar. There's there's hundreds of different options with regards to apps and and it's nice to kind of map and you know view your progress around that. I mean, like I said earlier, I'm very much into measurements and accountability and data data driving interventions. So that's um another good thing to do but certainly um intellectual health looking listening to likes of audiobooks variety of podcasts there's there's tons that you can um that, that you can pique your interest so you can really start your day hugely productively by investing in maybe maybe you know it's you could see it as cpd you know in terms of right i'm going to listen to this audiobook over the next two weeks i'm going to do 10 minutes every morning 10 minutes in the in the uh in the afternoon and that's just do, do small bites to work my way through the, the content or or podcast so um yeah anything that's maybe so yeah think of it as professional development time so so see it as part of your working day funny you should say that um when we were down off so i, I actually do that i, I didn't realize that, that, that i was actually fake commuting but one of the things i do is and um, it's hard to take time out of your desk time so when I'm sitting at my desk, I always have something to do, but a long list of things that need yeah, to get done right. and it gets added to, just like everybody else, it gets added yeah. every day. Every call you get is a little bit of stuff added to your list of stuff. And it's very hard to take time out to do, as you say, the podcasts or the listening to CPD courses and, and all that type of stuff. And I used to, and I, I tried, not, not so much in a really dark, wet winter mornings, but certainly when we get into spring and summertime, before I start work, I like to do about a four mile walk just to, and I, I do this thing, I, 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 interval walking where you maybe do two minutes at a regular pace, then two minutes at a faster yeah. pace, then back down to regular and back down. And I find that really helps to, to get my heart rate up and all that type of stuff. I find that really, really good. And I come back to the office energized, but I always felt a little bit guilty that I was losing time, you know, like everybody mm. else. Was one. And I find that just your suggestion, take your CPD um, cod, podcast with you and you can really listen to it as you get around. I think there's something about that idea of exercising while you're listening that it seems to sink in better. Or if, and I found it in my case that I'd come back and I would have this stuff in my mind and I would have listened to it, you know, while I was engaged rather than sitting on a computer screen, doing nothing else, fidgeting and, and maybe not yeah. being able to concentrate as well. So, yeah, I, th I think that's a, an absolutely fantastic suggestion for your... Certainly yeah. also you're cutting your distractions. So if... Um... If you're walking and listening, you're not really much doing much else. Mm -hmm. But if you're sitting and listening, you're getting your notifications, you're getting your, you know, 
anything that's that, that you're that's an, an eye range or ear 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 shot. Yeah. You know, that's 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 just that's pulling your attention away from from that. So yeah, when you're when you're walking and listening, there's you're pretty much giving full concentration, and then you get the blood flow, and the brain gets 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 activated. So it's all true, it's all going in a lot a lot better as well. I think there's actually some good evidence around uh, children do um, improving academically when instead of sitting at a desk and on a, on a seat, is they sit and learn on an exercise bike. Their their attention control is much greater. They're they're um, they're less fidgety. They're less distracted because the the legs are moving. So there's actually some sort of there's a concentration involved in that, and then and then, and then a focus in terms of listening and content. So I've never heard of that before. There you go. Now that's that's a that's a new idea. Yeah, strategies to to sort of um, teaching strategies to impact on likes of ADHD and. Um, and those kind of behavioral disorders is that it's, it's instead of making them sit still, get them move, get them moving, sitting sitting on a station bike. Use, use up that and, nervous energy, and then and then yeah, use up the energy, and actually um, behavior improves and and learning improves. So maybe I hit something there accidentally with my walking and, and podcast. Or, um, yeah. Well, then you know you know also like I mean because you post a lot of fantastic uh, um, content and on your Facebook group around. You know the benefits of walking, and you cover lots of categories like the health benefits, but uh, as an obvious one. But then, from a a, a working benefit, there's um, lots of good studies around people performing the same task in three different postures: so sitting, still, um, standing, still, or or walking. And and certainly, there's a huge difference between sitting and sitting and standing, and and uh, and the quality of of people's attention and work. And then people who then start to walk. Their, their productivity uh, increases, but also their creativity increases. Well, and that's the next question. So the fourth, the fourth of the five questions is in relation mm-hmm. to the social aspect of a fake community. Now, I had yeah. one earlier on about the, the business walking group that I had formed for Saturday mornings, and we, I get to walk with some good friends in business. And some of the ideas and conversations that have come out of those walks, you know, fantastic ideas and fantastic insights fantastic and um, developments and so somebody taking my idea and then developing on it and then me adding to it again and i think this podcast was, was actually a result of you and me having a conversation when i was out in one of my walks saying that i would love to yeah. sit down and, and have a conversation with you about this whole um well health at work type sort of thing and this this, this was the, the initial outworking i'm sure there'll be more um so how do you have any ideas about how to make that fake commute social or how to engage others in it are there groups already doing this how do you use your telephone to do it? what do you think on how to make the fake commute more social um there's plenty of options really we I mean, know uh, i think the, the, the most obvious one is like if you would have phone made a, made a few phone calls on your uh, on your car journey, or your, or on the train, or sitting wait, waiting for the waiting for the the plane to Birmingham, in the in the city airport in the morning, you know you would have been corresponding or making phone calls with uh, with, with people on a on a on a work matter. Um, if you're a, if you're a manager or a team leader, you know it's a really good opportunity to spend the first ten minutes in the morning on the phone with a couple of your your, your team members and. Just kind of check it in. I think particularly now with with well being being um, you know so so challenged and just doing that human check in um, as well. So so not only can you make it very work oriented, but I think you can also make it very human oriented in terms of you know how are you, how are you doing, and, and um, you know encouraging people to to take that step outside their front door, do ten minute, do, do at least ten minute walk, get some scenery get some nature and fresh air just to kind of promote a bit of extra well-being to kick the day off and um you know that that also the secret benefit of doing that is 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 getting that natural daylight particularly early in the morning is one of the most important factors to help you sleep later that night the body clock falls in in the line and it's almost like a, a a count a countdown of 16 hours to go now 
and your natural sleep hormone will, will kick in at, at 9 p.m. But if you're um, staying inside constantly and you're you're only using artificial lights and you're only maybe sitting get, getting daylight through a window, then it's not the it's not the, the ideal dose. So yeah. um, if you're having trouble sleeping, go for a walk in the morning, go for a fake commute, and you'll find that that will actually help you sleep better. Do you want actually um, before Michelle and I started Gilchrist and Co, my specialism was looking after accounts and and administrative resources for solicitors practices, case management, all that type of stuff. I, I was like a guy that came was parachuted in to resolve issues, and for some reason, the accounts office and all solicitors practices seemed to be built right in the cellar or the, the attic or the yeah. center of the building. It was always a dark room. And I can remember, funny you were talking about the commute. I used to leave home here in, uh, just outside Down Patrick at six o'clock in the morning so that I could miss the traffic and get into their offices early before everybody else and get an hour to work. Because once everybody arrived, I, my, my day was constant distraction. It would always be everybody coming in and talking. You just didn't get stuff done. And uh, it meant in the winter time, I didn't see mm. You know, I was leaving in the dark. I was in a building in a box and then leaving in the dark. <laughs> you know, for, 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 yeah. uh, apart from the weekends, you, you literally did I that. I, I, I've, heard, I've heard that a lot. You know, people who have that long commute, maybe live in the countryside, they, they actually tell me, I don't see my garden until, until Saturday. <laughs> That's right. Didn't see your yeah. garden. You didn't until, see garden. Didn't know you had green grass until, until, until the spring. Mm -hmm. so yeah it, I, I definitely think that's an important thing so uh, unbelievably we're, we're nearly an hour in here where does the time go oh but last question um, what what positive outcomes should anybody that takes the time to make a, a fake commute expect what are the benefits of a fake commute would you say the, the key benefits oh my goodness well, I was kind of recapping everything we just yeah. said so you know it's um I think, it's, you, first of all, it's just creating that psychological space between your work life and your home life. I think very importantly, you know, it's um, it's kind of providing a little bit of division between one one frame of mind and another and, and trying to establish um, some sort of distinction of when your day, when your working day starts and when your working day ends and, and just putting in a fake commute, that would be uh, an obvious way to do that. Um, other benefits would be that what we've just been mentioning there about the natural light and the fresh air and and uh, and the, the blood flow and the, and the brain thinking and, and, and that's actually starting to uh, enhance your productivity um do you know there's a, there's a great saying around um if you have if you have a problem what you should do is you, should, you know go for a walk you know the, the solution is usually fine on, on on that walk um the social benefits for ill. is that a saying as well there's yeah. a hell for every ill yes and then didn't we say about the social aspect? So then you could think of ways to connect with your team, whether whether it be on a on a personal well-being type uh, initiative, or it could be more of a on a work work-related productivity me me uh, method. Or we uh, we talked there even earlier about actually using the fake commuters as, as a CPD time and and tuning in to podcast or an audiobook or or some sort of learning to, to help. Um, enhance how, how you how you go and and you're doing that without distraction and and you're enha and, and enhancing actually the learning impact and effect from it too so um the studies i, I talked about studies there about three postures and in, in way of work sitting sitting standing and walking and we know that that standing and walking in have increased productivity from the from the people who do that and the people who go walking have increased creativity again if you've got a problem you, or you're looking for a solution go for a walk and it's, you'll, you'll be amazed all, all my best ideas have come from from certainly wandering around um the the the, the area that i that i live and um yes you, you get you get some real good space and thinking time and that those again we, we talked about the psychological markers that that taking two steps outside your front door and and have that have that feeling of i'm off to work that you used to always do that I'm off to work now and um and, and I think that's an important signal in your in your day as well as when you come back in from your second fake commute and you hang your coat up on your peg and say that's my that's my working day now done now my my home duties can can really start from here and and those those are two important 
um, moments in, in your day that, that probably bear it, no significance, but actually have huge significance. Um, so I think there's there's a number of reasons why a simple 10 minute walk twice a day, forgetting of course the obvious, we're 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 we're, we're minimum target is 30 minutes of activity. But you know, so if you can make that walk a brisk walk, you're hitting 20 minutes of your 30 minutes minimum dose. So all you need left is to schedule a, a lunchtime walkie-talkie phone call and your uh, and hey presto, you're, you've got your 30 minutes of physical activity that you should be getting uh, every, every day. And um, and then your your health, your physical health is 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 in better shape for that too. So it, it's a simple thing, but it has is Real huge, huge huge benefits and impact for me. Okay, finishing up, John. Thank you very much again for your time here. You've you've given me an hour of your evening. You've gone through this in incredible detail and shared an awful lot of information. What's next on your fake oh. commute project? Where are you taking this? Where are you going with it? Uh, how, how, what, what should people expect next from you in, re- in regard to hashtag fake commute? <laughs> well, look, I'm, I'm in a hugely exciting uh, development phase in my business. So um, through, some, through, through one of my consultancy projects, I have um, designed, developed, and tested a, phys- it's like a physical activity-based um, program that uh, is perfectly designed for for organizations for employees it's very fun motivating engaging it's a it's a challenge and everyone kind of loves loves a challenge it's the beauty of it is it's designed to be fully inclusive right the way across the the workforce and it, and it really is and it provides also a clever, very clever level playing field as well. So um, the elite performers or the, the fittest people in the company don't necessarily run away with, with the, the challenge, uh, nor do the people who have all the time in the day that don't have young children or older parents to, 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 to be look at, looking after as, as part of their, um, their, 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 their home time. So, um, it, it, it's been very carefully thought thought out th- thought through through a number of walks that I've been on, <laughs> and has uh, and has been thoroughly tested. Over a thousand people have been through it so far, and I'm now in a now in a, a really exciting phase. I've got a huge support from Invest NI, and um, we've got the the brand is now established, and we're, we're at the final stages of design and and ready to launch the, the brand and. And then the, the, the tech has gone from sort of a, an MVP status to to its kind of first origins, and that that will be um, released in the springtime. So I'm hugely excited about about where this is going, and that will be my uh, my main focus going forward is helping people stay motivated and keeping active and making workplaces more cohesive and and enjoyable. So and maybe we'll be seeing a new brand on your Zoom backdrop. You, yeah, you, you may do this. This is my consultancy brand may, may, will st- we'll always keep keep this, but yeah, I would expect a, a new a new back, background image soon. Very good. And if anybody's looking to contact you after seeing this and, and wants to find out more about Fake Commute and the services, yeah. you provided, how do they reach you? What's what's the best way to get a hold? Get me personally through through LinkedIn. So go and search search me on LinkedIn and connect that way. Uh, Dr. John E. Bloomfield, J O N N Y, and then um, find me find me on Facebook. Find me on Home for Good, uh, Home for Home, Home for Lunch, Home for Lunch, and you'll um, Home for Good. <laughs> home for Good. That's <laughs> that's that's the eternal lockdown. Home for Good. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, home, well, uh, you'll find me on Home for Lunch, and of course, you can visit Support to Perform that that way there. <laughs> Support to Perform, uh, the website. So, if you want to see some of the stuff, some of the work we do, and um, and get in touch with us that way, then uh, and by all means, um, let's have a conversation. Dr. Jonathan Bloomfield, thank you very much for your time this evening. I have really enjoyed the conversation. I'm really looking forward to the end of the lockdown, so we can get out, get our boots on, and get walking again. Yeah, I can't wait. Everyone else, thanks for joining us. I hope you found the conversation very useful. There will be a watch party um, very soon that you'll be able to engage in the conversation with us and watch out my feed for more information about that. And with that, good night all. Bye.